When I'm not feeling a very strong sense of entrapment every time my female friends ask my honest opinion about the new Barbie movie, I like to answer questions and comments to get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Sean, these triad videos are so great. You explain them so well. I've watched countless vids on here on the topic, and I've been lost. Thanks for helping. Please continue with these bottom strings if possible. I would be happy to because the bottom strings, the lower strings, are in my opinion where the real magic happens with triads, okay? So a triad is essentially a three note chord. Technically, it is a chord that is stacked in thirds, so like major and minor chords, which we're gonna talk about too because I have a, a hot take on triads coming up after we talk about just some of the lower strings, right? And a lot of the videos that I've posted and a lot of videos most people post are videos on triads and like the highest three strings, something like Kind of just like, you know, using the highest three strings to kind of make little pieces of either major or minor chords to help with soloing. But we do neglect the lower strings, okay? So we're gonna do everything on the E, A, and D string and then eventually get into some G string stuff. But I wanna talk about this chord right here. So this is a C major seven if you play all six strings, all right? So now my ring finger is on the third fret of the E string. This is a G, pinky, third fret on the A string. That's a C, middle finger, second fret on the D string, which is an E. So right there, G, C, and E. This is a C major chord, right? So remember, the definition of a triad is a chord stacked in thirds, a three note chord stacked in thirds. So if C is one, the third one from there, C, D, E, C, and E, and then a third from there, E, F, G, C, E, G. So, same notes, but we have the G in the bass. So this is called an inversion, right? And this one is used common enough, right? Just a C slash G chord. Something like that. But what I don't see people use that often is this shape used just as any major shape or an alteration using any minor shape, okay? So one thing that I like to talk a lot about in my lessons are just using chords in a chord scale, basically all the chords that populate a key, all right? So we're gonna play the entire C major chord scale just on the lowest three strings using this shape and this shape, okay? So this is gonna be the one chord, C major. I'm gonna move this from three, three, two to five, five, three. Right, so instead of the exact same shape, we're flattening the note on the D string, okay? So five, five, three. This is gonna be a minor chord triad, right? I don't see people use this one as often as they should because again, any minor chord, you can just think of where your pinky is as your root note, and then just kind of use that as a minor chord. So C major, D minor, E minor, Okay, have you ever even heard a, a one, two, three chord progression played like that? One, two, three, two, which is a replacement for C, D minor, E minor, D minor. It's a good way to maybe just kind of switch it up if it's like a different part of the song, just to kind of get a totally different sound. And I'm palm muting this a little bit. We can continue going through the chord scale, right? Just a really cool, easy way that you can switch between them. C major, D minor, E minor, F major. Again, we're going back to that C major shape, but now it's eight, eight, seven. G major is gonna be the next chord, the five chord, 10, 10, nine. And then A minor, 12, 12, 10, okay? So the one chord, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, then we could, you know, we can continue going and hitting the, uh, the seven chord in a key, which would look something like this. There's that diminished chord, which would be the F on the E string, so that'd be 13, the B on the A string, 14, and then 12 on the D string. But we're not gonna use that one so much. Anyways, so right off the bat, we can use these as replacement chords for one, two, three, four, five, six, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six. And already there's a lot of utility right there. 
because you can make maybe a different sounding chord progression. And you know it's gonna sound good if you're using Elixir Strings, the sponsor of this video. You guys know that I refuse to even play an acoustic guitar or even electric guitar if it doesn't have Elixir Strings on there. I think that 12s are the absolute best compromise between the feel of it and the tone of it, but also for the live guitars that I've played, like live acoustic stuff, I kind of pick 11s just because they're easier on your hands for like, you know, multiple hours of gigging where you're playing, maybe bar chords and stuff like that. But huge fan of Elixirs. Uh, you guys know, they sound, they sound great, they last forever, and they come in, you know, a cool looking pack. So get yourself some Elixir. Nanowebs are the ones that I usually use, but all of them are really cool. So, you know, if you want to support the channel, definitely click the link in the description because Elixir helps me out a lot. I owe them a lot, so keep it going. Let's keep this party going, everybody, right? So another way that you can kind of continue on with this is you can use this as a way to play chords within a key where the open strings will help you out, right? The key of C is a great example of this. I can really just use the open G, B, and E strings and add these to these lower triads. How cool does that sound? You know, eventually, essentially you're not playing a triad anymore when you're doing this, like this would be a major seven chord, and then you have this D minor with the G, B, E on top. And you get some kind of funky sounding stuff along the way, but it's a great way to just start thinking about, oh, maybe this would sound cool using this lower voice voiced triad and then hitting it up top. One thing that I don't think we talk about enough are suspended chords as triads. Again, a suspended chord is not by the textbook definition, a triad, but it's a three note chord. Just because it's not stacked in thirds, it doesn't fulfill, like I said, the, uh, the college educated version of a triad, but to me it is a triad. So I think one of my favorite chord voicings, but I think one of the prettiest chord voicings, especially on the lower strings of guitar, is something like this. This is like a G sus two. Some people call this a G add nine. It really is the third fret on the E string, the fifth fret on the A string, and the seventh fret on the D string. First of all, it just looks impressive if you can get that reach. But the thing about a sus two chord or a sus four chord is it isn't major and it isn't minor. It takes the third of it, which is what usually designates the class of a chord, and then just makes it the two, right? Now, what's interesting is in a key, all those main chords that we talked about, there's only one of them that doesn't have a natural two in it. And that would be the third degree in any key. That would be uh, the Phrygian mode, basically. So what that means in the key of C, that E, you can't really have an E sus two because then you'd have an F sharp in that chord. But again, you know, that's, that's just some music theory talk. If you want to learn more about music theory, definitely check out my Patreon. But just good rule of thumb is if you're going to sus twoify any chord. The three chord is the spicy one you might want to stay away from, but you can do that trick on any single other triad in the key, right? So let's go through the key of G real quick. If we start here as our root note, that could be a replacement as a one chord. That could be the two chord. The three chord we could just kind of keep as normal, but then four, five, six, all are fair game, right? You can do the same thing in the key of C. If we think of either the root position like that, or even get an inversion on that. But again, I think these are just really cool things that you can do to kind of make some different sounding chord progressions, right? Like how cool does that sound that like sus two with the open top? that D sus two. And again, it looks fancy because we're getting that big old stretch in, right? So I think that uh, using the lower strings to help you maybe make riffs or kind of move chords around in different song arrangements is something that is very underrated actually when it comes to guitar playing. And also, let me know if you want to see a lesson on this because I think that Using sus2 chords as a way to like run into solos and tie stuff up together is another cool thing to do because like let's take that G, right? If we take a G and then 
really just kind of play that. We can arpeggiate that G sus too. You get a G, an A, and a D. That's a really easy shape. If you think of this as like a like an L shape or something, we just go G, A, D, then straight down an octave, G, A, D. And right there, that's kind of like an interesting little line that you can kind of work into anything. And then it's like, yeah, we, we do this, bum, 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 bum. And then that lines you up in like a position that maybe you're more familiar with, maybe minor pentatonic, stuff like that. But again, I digress. I don't wanna to get too far into that. Let me know if you do wanna see a video on that kind of stuff. But the main star today is just these open voice triads on the bottom, open party on the top. Sounded great with elixir strings. Feels like every Conjuring movie sound effects are made from this one. So this is a comment from a video I posted where we recorded this ridiculous instrument because I was helping out make a soundtrack for a video game called The Callisto Protocol. Really cool game. Uh, it's out on PS5 right now if you guys are interested. Check that video out, I'll link it in the description because it's some, some wild stuff. Shout out to my man Brian for letting me be involved in the project. But they're also doing a online vote for the best video game horror soundtrack and it would help me out if you guys voted for it so i'll leave you a link if you're interested in helping out because you can vote for callisto protocol and uh that helps me kind of get get run back and still be involved in the mix plus i don't think like a lot of people are voting for this so every little vote helps and you can actually swing this election but that was really cool so if you guys have any uh questions for brian you know he's my he's my homeboy so we're happy to like do more video game soundtrack kind of stuff because we got some big projects coming up. So uh, definitely, if you have a spare minute, eh, give us a vote eh, and be awesome. You left out a lot of information, so your video is kind of a fail. Peter, age 73. <laughs> you know what, this actually happens more than you might think, where someone leaves a salty comment, and then they feel the need to introduce themselves by name and age at the end of the comment. <laughs> Like it's some kind of like salty alcoholics like anonymous like intro. <laughs> Never their full name. So it's not, it's not like a respectable thing where you're actually taking some accountability for your ridiculous salty opinion on a free internet video. You're still you're still shrouded in in just the first name, but you also feel the need to to tell me your age. So uh, thank you for the information, and I'll try to make a video that's more of a success next time. Would love to learn that version of seven nation army thank you so i did a video last week with my friend jamie where we did the we did like a chill version of seven nation army which you know the riff though and uh i actually did a lesson on this on youtube which i'll link uh in the description but it's more like kind of like a jazzy like a and you know it's like it's a fun one, and it's a song that everybody should learn because... It's like an iconic riff in a song. It's a cool way to kind of like maybe turn a riff into chords. So yeah, I already did a lesson for that. Uh, I'll link you if you're still interested. Uh, but usually I do the song lessons on my Patreon. I've got like, I think like well over a hundred lessons on there right now. So one of the reasons I don't teach song lessons that much on my channel is because I generally don't play it like it's supposed to be played. I try to just do, you know, like my version of it. Which works out great because I probably couldn't play it the way the original artist intended to play it. So I just kind of like, just, you know, put together something that sounds decent. So because of that, that's why all the song lessons or most of the song lessons are on Patreon. But I do like how that one turned out. So I will link you to that in the description. What is your guitar? So yeah, I actually do get a lot of questions like this. I've talked about this before. This is a Martin D18. I really think like... Man, I just, I'm such a sucker for Martin Dreadnoughts. I think I do maybe want to get like a Martin Triple O size or something sometime soon. Hopefully I'm going to be back at the Martin Factory uh, in the next month or so. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, the, the D18 I feel like is just like the classic Martin workhorse guitar. There's nothing like super fancy about it, just like quality. Uh, made at the Martin Factory here in the US. You know, tried and true, all solid wood, D18. 
Man, I just, between this and the D35 I have uh, down in Florida, like, I'm just, I'm just such a sucker for Martin guitars. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for what maybe a smaller body Martin would be, because that would definitely be the one that I would want to maybe add next, because, again, I think, like, in my soul, I'm definitely a dreadnought guy, but for... You know, different styles of music and stuff, maybe a smaller body might be might be more appropriate. But man, I think my go-to is always gonna be uh, reaching for any kind of Martin D series. So for listening homework this week, I'm gonna throw you to a synthwave band called The Midnight. I actually just saw them play downtown Los Angeles last night. Awesome, awesome live show. It's like, it's like a great synth band, but then on top of it, they just have this dirty saxophone player that is just like, just like killing it with the sax lines. And every time, and again, this is like, this like, this cool like Asian dude like just playing sax, he would just like hit a sax line and the crowd would go wild no matter what he played. It's like the, I feel like Synthwave is the perfect just framework to just have just dirty, filthy, single note, just saxophone, just like riffs or solos on top of. So yeah, The Midnight has some really cool music. Uh, check them out. Like I said, thank you to Elixir Strings for sponsoring the video. If you do have time, definitely vote for Callisto Protocol in the Horror Game of the Year soundtrack awards. And if you have any questions for me, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.